In miniature wargaming, players build large armies consisting of units of 10 or more models. Some armies consist of a high points cost value and require multiple different model types in order to achieve that target. All these models need to be painted by a set time in order to look outstanding on the battlefield for the next game, and batch painting allows you to paint multiples of models quickly and easily in order to reach that goal. But wait a minute! You're a model car builder and you clicked on this video to get some model car building tips. So how does batch painting wargaming minis apply to model cars? Well, what if I told you that you can apply this painting technique to build more model cars in a faster period of time? Why would you want to do that? Suppose you want to build a large diorama and you need several model cars to complete it. Or perhaps you bought several of the same model car to build in different ways, like one that is factory stock, one custom, and one as a drag racer. Or maybe you're just tired of having so many models sitting on the shelf and you just want to get them done as soon as possible to have room to get more models. If you want to build multiple model car kits at the same time, then maybe batch painting is for you. To begin a project of this magnitude, you will need a plan to help you see it through. First off, you will want to select a model car subject that interests you and is of one general type. I have several duplicate cars or series cars in my collection to choose from. 39 and 40 AMT Fords, 1977 Pintos, 69 to 72 Oldsmobiles, and several others come to mind. For this video, I am going to complete a project that I began many years ago that ended up stalling. I had intended to build a series of AMT 1925 Ford Model T kits for a display and I got through some stages, but didn't finish a project as a whole. Sound familiar? I think that's a story we can all relate to. This video is a perfect opportunity for me to pick up where I left off and finally reach my goal. Many AMT 1925 Ford Model T kits have been released over the years, but they all boil down into four body types. The Roadster with the turtle back, the Roadster pickup, the C-cab truck, and the five-window sedan or the tall T. The only thing that changes between these models are the bodies, but the amount of universal parts between the kits is outstanding. Therefore, the AMT Model T kit is ideal for a batch painting assembly line. Hmm, that sounds fitting, doesn't it? Ford in the assembly line. I like the sound of that. The first tip is to set your standard and live with it. You need to have a clear goal on what good looks like to you and know when it is time for you to stop the painting project. Not everyone's standard or vision of what looks good is the same. However, it is far too easy to keep adjusting details on your model and turn it into a chore that can bog you down so that your model will never get finished. So set your standard and live within it. The second tip is to do your research before you begin painting and especially before you begin bulk painting. Take some time to hunt down photos of the car you are building. You can look in books or search through the internet for pictures and videos. Vintage advertisements can also help. See what colors the real car had, where it had them, and then pull those paints from your collection, load them into your paint carousel, and get ready to paint. Getting back to my project, the Ford Model T's from 1914 to 1925 followed Henry Ford's mantra of any customer can have a car painted any color that he wants, so long as it is black. Henry said this in 1909, but it wasn't implemented until 1914 and ended in 1926 due to losing sales figures to Chevrolet and Dodge. Therefore, I will be loading my paint carousel with testers gloss black, semi-gloss black, and flat black for the various black colors, Tester is white for the champion spark plugs, wood colors for the floorboards, flat aluminum for the wheel rings and muffler, and flat steel for the exhaust pipe. Interiors seem to be of three types, semi-gloss black leather for the seats and door panels of open top cars and light tan, gray and military brown for closed cars like the tall T coupe body and sedans. All interiors have gloss black dashboards, steering wheels and steering columns, and a black rubber floor mat. Wheels are another point of interest. All Model T's had wooden spoke wheels for 1925, but some pictures show wood-colored spokes while others show black painted spokes. 
The wheel hub and outer ring are gloss black, but the choice of wood or black spokes is up to you. Although the factory painted all their cars in gloss Japan black, some people repainted their Ford Model T bodies other colors to make them look different. Many kept the black fenders and radiator shroud, but some commercial vehicles, like fire trucks, painted everything a bright color like red, yellow, white, or blue. The choice is up to you, but for me, I am going to paint the body of the Sea Cab Fruit Wagon in yellow and use the kit provided decals to make it look more like a festive business. The third tip is to have a paint test model. A paint test model is a single model from your collection that you are going to build and paint first as a pattern for all your other models in that series. Test models are great because they give you a really good indication of what that model is going to look like in the end, how difficult that process of building and painting that model is, and how you can make that process more efficient. Test models also allow you to set your paint standards so that you can duplicate that across all the other models in your series. It's really important to make your model look striking on the tabletop, especially if you're going to display it in a model contest or diorama. You want people to look at it and think, that looks fantastic! If you can pull that off and you can draw people's eye into the right place, then they won't be looking at the minor details of the model or looking for flaws. They will just see the model as a whole and enjoy it. My test model is this Laurel and Hardy 1925 Model T pickup truck I made from one of these AMT kits years ago. The colors are correct and the workmanship is up to the standard I set for this project. From building this kit in the past, I know what to expect with it and I know how to fix its flaws in the line, the frame and troublesome headlights so that everything sits level and looks correct in the end. Now that you have your building plan sorted out, it's time to prepare the parts for batch painting. At this stage, we can take out all our parts trees and remove the parts that we need for our build. Since these kits are basically duplicates of each other, pressed from virtually the same mold, it wouldn't matter if the individual parts from each kit were mixed into one pile. Because these models are all built to a universal standard, a hood from kit A will easily swap with a hood from kit B and so on all the way across the line. You want to make sure you clean up all these parts by removing seam lines, flash, mold marks, part street connection points, and fill in sand any sink marks and bodywork that the kit requires. Also check to see that the parts fit into the corresponding holes and that metal axles go into the wheels and rotate in the plastic axle housings before you paint them. It is better to correct the kit mistakes now than to ruin your paint job trying to fix them up later. For example, this is the interior that fits the optional tall T body found in the Three Stooges Ollie's Garage Model T pickup truck model kit from 2016. And you can see that it has a rear package shelf molded to the back. However, this interior does not come in that model. The interior bucket comes from the Laurel and Hardy Model T Roadster kit released in 1976 and AMT tells you in those instructions to cut the package shelf off to make it fit the Roadster body. Unfortunately, the new releases of the AMT 1925 Model T kits that include the Tall T body don't include this package shelf, so I am going to keep this tub as a pattern to use to make new package shelves out of evergreen sheet styrene for future Tall T interiors. Let me know in the comments section down below if you knew of this issue, and while you're at it, click that thumbs up button if you like this video so far. Also, now is a good time to build up sub-assemblies such as the engine, so that you can paint it as a unit. When you are finished with cleaning up and assembling your parts, group all similar items and put them in a safe place so you won't lose them before you paint them. I will use these Ziploc bags for my small parts and a cardboard tray box for the larger ones. Once your parts are cleaned up, you're going to need some way to hold them while you paint them. I use these reverse clothes pegs to hold the small parts, and I also tape down parts to cardboard boxes to make the process easier. Bigger clips can be used on larger parts, while hooks can be used if you want to spray paint or airbrush and you have somewhere to hang your model kit parts. Also, a wooden rod can be inserted into holes, such as the wheel backs and transmission to hold those parts while you paint. Gather all the similar parts to be painted, then assign them a color. 
Here are the seat bottoms and interior tubs for the open roadster bodies and I will paint these with Tester's semi-gloss black to simulate the black leather and the gas tank under the seat will be painted gloss black. For this project some of the parts were painted with a spray can in the past but I will finish the project now with paint brushes instead. I just find that they help my motivation and speed. And now here's a fourth tip. If you are looking to speed paint with acrylics then there's a really important tool you need to have. I know this sounds silly, but a hair dryer will help dry out the water from the acrylic so you can move on to the next step sooner. Just take care, because too much heat can warp your plastic parts. You really just want some warm air blowing in the direction of your painted parts until the paint doesn't look wet anymore, and not direct scalding heat. But when in doubt, just let it air dry on its own so there is no chance of it warping. If you enjoyed that tip, and you may think it might have saved one of your model kits from a similar fate, Please subscribe to this channel and check out our library for more videos like this. Next, line up all the parts that are going to be painted one color. Since my Model T's are primarily gloss black, I will break this up into a series of parts such as the radiators, hand cranks, bodies, fenders, and so on. I will start with the part on my left and paint it fully and then move across to my right and paint each consecutive part until all those same parts are finished. I'll then take those parts to a dust-free place where they can dry 24 hours before I move on to the next parts to paint, also moving them to the drying area when they are done. Now I have a simple assembly line going and I will only need to clean my brush once, and that is after I finish applying all the gloss black paint. Welcome to batch painting! Small detail parts can be painted using the same method. Paint the part completely on each model, then move to the next and the next and the next. Doing so will help your body build muscle memory for the job at hand, which will make the process go faster and faster. After 24 hours, my parts are dry and I can sand out any imperfections with 1200 grade wet sandpaper and give them a second coat. For more information on the painting process, check out this video scrolling across the top of your screen right now in order to learn all the secrets of brush painting. Once all your parts are dry and you are satisfied with the look of the paint job, it is time to assemble your model. Remember that the model cement will only adhere to bare plastic. Therefore, it is necessary to remove any paint or chrome plating from the area to which the cement is to be applied. Here's an example of what happens if you forget this important step. You might think this custom chrome radiator is securely held in place in the painted radiator shroud. But one quick tap makes it come out. You can see that the glue tried very hard to do its job, but the paint and chrome blocked it. Removing the chrome and paint from these surfaces will give these parts a plastic to plastic weld they desperately need to fuse together. If you neglect this step, your entire model will eventually fall apart. Click the thumbs up button if you clean the paint and chrome from the contact surfaces before gluing them together. Now we can assemble our models according to the instructions and touch up any mistakes we made along the way. And as a final tip, we all make mistakes, just like the Three Stooges, and it's really important to understand how to manage them. When it comes to fixing mistakes, never correct them until the end, and then have a stage once all the models have been finished to go over each model individually and quickly correct those tiny issues. This final attention to detail will result in an award-winning model that people will remember and enjoy. And now that you've got the theory of batch painting figured out, let's go check out my completed Model T collection. I had to paint the bed of the Laurel and Hardy pickup truck with natural wood colored paint because I realized I missed that in the original build of this kit. Also you can see that the body shell and the hood have come off. That's because I also never glued those parts on. I was making it for that museum night and uh, I had to do it in a hurry so some of that never actually got finished. Also the seat has never been glued in. 
So I'm going to try to correct those issues while I'm building the rest of all these kits. So there we go. So I discovered that I had to change my standard and actually upgrade it a bit on the Laurel and Hardy Model T because when I did build this for the museum display night, I built it rather quickly and I didn't get everything. So one thing is I used my original steering wheel that I had in a different Model T when I was a kid and the uh, center was all copper. So upon looking at some real pictures of Model Ts, I discovered that it's just the le levers that are copper and the center button on some Model T steering wheels. So I painted the little spokes of the wheel gloss black to uh, fix that up. I also added in the windshield in here. That was another thing that got missed on the quick build. And then the Model T folded top. I uh, did this when I was a kid and it was pretty smart actually. I glued a flat piece of plastic on there. I think this was clear plastic at one time. But you can actually wedge it in the little gap between the body and the seat. And then that keeps this folded top in place without having to glue it. And then I added in Laurel and Hardy here. Uh, what was another thing I discovered on? Oh yeah. So I actually had two bodies. Now one of them that I used for the display is sitting over here. And if I just change this up a little, you can see the little white um, scratches on here. That was actually a great big drip <laughs> that was all in the side of the body here. And the reason why I didn't, oops, I didn't use this body originally on the build is that because I, it was, I couldn't get it to fit on the frame and body. And what that ended up being is if you look at the back, there's a little notch in here. And I actually had to file the notch just at the bottom where my thumbnail is, had to kind of relieve a bit of the stuff off of there and then that just popped into place nicely and from gluing it down I was actually able to get in closer I missed all those little like electrodes that are sitting up here on the firewall I never painted them so I corrected that now and another thing that was kind of bugging me a bit but I see some Model T's are like this the entire manifold exhaust manifold intake manifold and the carburetor are all one color now some of these Model T's, I don't know, it's really weird on the internet because Henry Ford said in this era you can have any color as long as it was black. And there's a whole bunch of black paints being used on the Model T. Now the engine, it's black, but it's a different black than the gloss black, which I painted this in, but that's okay. And um, I've noticed online people are painting these things green or maybe some of them came as green engines. Oh, it's really weird. Um, and then the exhaust manifolds, some of them are like metal on the top and then others are black and whatever. So I just, I'm not even going to try to imagine what the real Model T engine looks like because it's like everybody's got a different paint on it. The hood fit better once I glued the body on. The radiator I also noticed, there's all these um, tubes or the, you know, the water, the water pipe, what do you call it? The rubber hose. Anyway, it doesn't actually connect onto the radiator, which I find is really interesting. You can, I can actually move the radiator back and forth and uh, it won't touch the radiator hose. That's what I'm trying to say. I had a long day at work today. Anyway, the hood fits on here a lot nicer now. I can actually take this one off and switch it with the uh, raspberry colored Model T I was trying to do fits in nice. It's actually kind of neat like that. But anyway, oh yeah, and the more I was uh, <laughs> basically handling this Model T, the more things were falling off and the more stuff I realized I never actually glued or painted. The metal axle through here, I should paint that black so it disappears into the black plastic axle. Um, and then what else? Oh yeah. Whoops. There goes. Hardy. They're not glued in. Underneath, 
That's actually supposed to be wood under there, and I completely missed that on my first build of this. I thought it was painted black. The bottom of the truck bed, of course, should be black. Oops, I lost both these guys out here. Oh, one thing that I also noticed, the reason why Laurel and Hardy fit so well in the Model T is because their legs basically fold down and terminate right at the edge of the seat, so they're not got a foot sticking out into one of the floor pedals or something like that. So they fit in quite nicely. But yeah, so I had to upgrade my standard on here so that I could get the rest of the cars going. That's what it's supposed to look like underneath with the wood. You can see the white where I scraped away so that I will get the plastic to plastic contact needed to hold these on. Here's my three frames with engines. I have two more but I haven't built them and one's got a broken spring but it seems to me I had this problem before in the past. So this spring, if you look at it, it looks kind of thick and kind of weird. It's actually cut out of evergreen sheet styrene and then kind of scribed in to look like a spring because this one here is the real kit spring. You can see how like thin it is. Here's our painted fruit stand and you can see I've got melons here as well as peaches, oranges, apples, strawberries, bananas, grapes and even pears. So really fun stuff painting this up and it should look really great in the truck. So I've decided to paint one of the Model T's with Tester's 1111 blue. This is a really dark blue and it is quite thin. Here's the paint with no thinner added. I did strain it and put it into one of these little cups. But you can see just how fast this thing pools up right into the top. It is a really thin, quick flowing type of paint and it's directly right out of the bottle. Here's the pickup truck bed with one coat of Tester's 1111. And you can see just how thin that paint is. It's almost like a watercolor. It was uh, quite thin to apply as well as quite transparent. And you can see where it pooled up in the dark areas. But again, this is just the first coat. So I'm hoping with other coats, it will darken up. Here we have the same paint with another single coat. And this is over a black base. And again, it makes the black look really, really dark. And you can see where I sanded through here and painted over the top. You can see that blue as a transparency. Again, it's a cool color, but uh, I'm not quite sure how many coats this is gonna take. Here I have the hood, and this is with two coats of paint. And you can see that it is getting quite a bit darker compared to the one coat with the pickup truck bed. Again, though, it is quite thin and watery color looking, but overall with it darkening, it should look good once we get a few more coats on there. Here is the hood after applying a third coat of Tester's 1111 Blue, and you can see that it is darkening up. However, it still is thin in some spots, like just right on the louvers and up in here. So a fourth coat will be needed. But overall, the dark tone is coming up on this. Here we have the pickup truck bed after three coats of the dark blue. And you can see now that it is starting to look like what was in the bottle, which is a good sign. Now, I am going to put the Three Stooges decals on this for the Oily's Garage just for something a little bit different. And I will have to paint the dark blue where this clip is. What I'm thinking of doing is gluing this down onto the fenders and then painting it, you know, installed on the truck body. Here I have the hood after four coats of paint. I was going to stop at three, but I think four for this color is quite ideal based on how thin it was. I don't think I'm going to try to paint the pickup truck bed with four coats and the black body actually matches this with the hood. So overall, you will need quite a few coats with Tester's 1111 Blue. Here's our Model T after four coats of Tester's 1111 Blue. And you can see just how wonderful this looks. It's nice and smooth for a brush paint job. The reflection in the side is wonderful. And the level of gloss is really quite high. Again, really excellent work in here. Now all I need to do is paint the wood inside the bed, and this one is pretty much finished. Also need to do the wheels. Here we have the steering columns in gloss black paint, and the 
bottoms where the steering knuckles are, they are white plastic because I was holding them with the clamps. However, this does make it easy to put the column in and then glue it right here on the connecting rod down below. And then I can always paint this with black paint after it's installed in the car. The next step is to batch paint the wheels and I have them here in sets. So you can see that I've got enough for six cars. And of course, some of them are going to be painted in different colors. So I have red here, then we've got black. These are not painted, but they will be painted black because it's just easier. And others will be painted with the wood color. Once the spokes have been painted, of course, I'm going to be painting with some steel or aluminum around the outer edge, just like on the real Model Ts. Here's our first little batch of Ford Model T wheels. These ones have the wooden spokes. These are the painted black factory spokes. And then these are the custom painted spokes in red. And again, you can see how nice these look. These ones have the tires added on, and I'll have to do that for the rest of the wheels, as well as do a little bit of touch up around where the silver rim is compared to the black wheel. On this Model T, I added in the cow lanterns right here, and these were from the custom parts tree. What I did was I had to extend the posts off the back in order to mount this properly, and I had to drill holes into the lanterns. First, I cut off the pins that were molded in and then drilled in the holes. These are 1 16th holes, and I used some evergreen styrene 1 16th rod and added them in on both sides of the cowl in the front, as well as into the back on the side of the trunk lid. Now, they do give you four in each car, and that's always a plus. However, what I found out is they only gave you one left-hand side and three rights, or it was three lefts and one right. Either way, uh, you will have to remove one of the posts from one side and then drill in the rod into the other. And here's how it looks from underneath with the rod going through the hole in the body as well as up here in the cowl. And now all I need to do is paint the lantern's gloss black. And you'll notice that the bulge is toward the back and on the cowl one the bulge is toward the front. And that is the way that these lanterns are if you look at them in real life. as well as the taller part goes on top with the little rounded ball part on the bottom. Now these are, I do believe, kerosene lanterns. So the little top actually has some air breathers and whatever for the hot kerosene gas vapors to come out of at the top while the light is down below. So it's basically like an old style kerosene lantern. Here we have the lanterns with the pins sticking out the sides and you can see how long I had to make these pins in order for them to go through the body and sit nice and flat as well as pointing straight forward and not tilting inward. Not all of the Model T's had these lanterns installed but it was an aftermarket item. In fact there was many of them offered back in the day and since this is the little runabout I thought it might be kind of cool to add them in just for a more sporty look. In addition to batch painting, I also went on the internet and I found a whole bunch of 1927 and 1925 license plates, as well as some Amazing Stories magazines and westerns. And then over here I have a couple of records. And then I've got some movie posters and even a newspaper from the Vancouver Sun, I believe it was. And all these are around 1925, 1927, that sort of thing. Now, what I wanted to do was make these cars in 1927 because then I can use my Model T's from all those eras. So like the 1923 panel vans and the uh, depot hack as well as all the cars from 1925 which I'm building now and then the police car from 1927 and that's also the Model T Ford Phaeton. So again using what I can and coming up with some little ideas just to put inside the cars for a little point of interest. 
Here we have some of those cool printed elements coming together. Right there we have a jazz record. We also have an old Pulp Fiction magazine of the time period and a folded up newspaper. I've also added in a printed off license plate as well as the rear lights have been painted red, including the little one above the license plate itself. From the front, you can see just how sporty this Model T looks with the purple paint, as well as the printed license plate down below, and the bright yellow wheels. We also have the cowl lights painted in gloss black, with a little bit of silver in the front to represent the light. Now when I started to work on the tall T bodies, I noticed something about the firewall. So what we have here is if you look at the Roadster and the Roadster pickup body, you'll notice that there's an opening of course, and two little bars right here and here, which sort of support the firewall when you put it in place. Like that, to keep it from falling into the body opening. And on the firewall itself, if you look up top, there's just the slightest little ridge, and that hooks up with the top of the arch. Now, this works fine in the Roadster body, and it also is there in the chopped coupe, which again, it fits nicely and rests on those two little blocks, and then we can support it, or sorry, push it up into the top where that ridge is and glue it in place. However, on the tall T body, and this is also the same for the flower truck, the opening is not right in here, and there's no little backstops to hold the firewall in place. And as you can see, I'm having some difficulty trying to get the firewall in there because it doesn't fit fully or properly in between the arch. So what you need to do is take that sanding block and just carefully sand going this way, and of course this way. Just go slow, a little bit at a time, until that firewall starts to fit in. And you also need your round file and just round these edges right in here and here, there and there. And with a little bit of fidgeting, you will be able to get that firewall into the opening just like this, in the same way that it would go into like the chopped coop or the little uh, roadster body. So a nice tight fit in there. And also when you're gluing it in, because you're opening this up, make sure that this and this, these two little areas, are basically level with one another. And if you do that before the glue dries, it should fit perfectly onto the fenders just like that. And here it is with the hood in place. This, of course, is the raspberry colored hood, which is going to go onto the other tall T, but just to show you how well that fits in. Now, the other thing with the tall T and the firewall is actually putting in the steering column. Now, with the Roadster body, of course, with the firewall being there, you can easily put the uh, steering column in through that hole and then turn the steering wheel until it adjusts properly. However, with the closed car, you can't go in from the top, obviously, right? Because you got that roof in there. So what I suggest is, you know, once the glass is in here, just take your steering column and go through the hole from the bottom. Maybe leave it out like this. Now you'll have your dashboard in there as well, and then you can plop your interior in through there. Then once this is established like that, now keep in mind there's going to be the frame and the engine, but you should be able to, you'll have to manipulate this from the outside. You can see my steering wheel here is sliding all over the place. But uh, once you got the frame down below, just carefully bring it into position. And it should hook up perfectly in there once you get your frame in and uh, it would hook up to the lower lower tie rod there. And uh, that's basically how you're going to have to put the steering wheel in in the tall coupe. And the whole reason of doing it that way through the bottom is of course because this does not fit in properly and you would have to enlarge that hole and get this to fit in right, because otherwise the other thought I had would be to 
go like this. Oops, hold this somehow from sliding out. And then put the firewall in. Okay, maybe that wouldn't have worked so well. <laughs> but at any rate, you yeah, know, that sort of thing. Well, I could put a piece of tape on the end so it didn't go through that hole like it did. But that would be the other way. But again, like I say, you really have to glue the firewall on first and then paint the body. So bringing the steering wheel up through the bottom is really the only solution I have for this. Do you have another solution for that? Let me know in the comments down below. So one thing I was doing with these builds is I was building up the frame as a one piece and then gluing it up into the fender arrangement. But what I've noticed is that the geometry in here is really difficult because the Model T is sitting on these elliptical or semi-elliptical springs. And as you can see, they've got a big arc in here. And when you start to put them into the area to be glued in, their attachment point, this can get crooked in here because it wants to seesaw, I guess is the best way to describe that, it wants to act as a seesaw on this point. So you're trying to line up that rear axle and it's going like this underneath. And what was happening is when I put the wheels and the axles through on the frames, I was noticing that one corner was lifted up just slightly so that the whole model would be rocking, you know, if you put a bit of weight on the one side. And we don't want that. We want all four wheels to contact the tabletop. So this time around, I'm going to take the fenders and the frame with the engine glued in it and nothing else because before I was assembling the whole thing and I'm going to glue it right into the fender assembly first so that the frame is attached perfectly in there. Then afterwards I'm going to put the springs in here. I'm going to use liquid glue because in that way I've got time to adjust this and I'll put both front and rear springs in with wheels and uh, I will get that liquid glue in there, with the rear axle, of course, and with the wheels and everything, and I will turn it over and set it up, you know, like this on the ground with the wheels on it. And then I will be able to rock the body back and forth until it's level and all four wheels will touch the ground. So here is my solution to fixing that tilt issue with the springs in the back of the Model T. Now what I did is I cut a little bit of styrofoam here. Originally this was going to go right under the car, but it was having some issues hitting the uh, the drive shaft there. And uh, so that wasn't very good. So instead, I actually cut this end of the block in half. And I was able to put it up underneath here. So this is just some styrofoam with a bit of cardboard glued to it. I was trying to get the height all in styrofoam, but I cut a little short. However, the cardboard kind of made up the diff. So what I did is I put a block on each side of the running board right to the proper height in order to get that rear axle spring down here to connect onto the wheels, of course, well, the whole rear, rear axle. And then the wheels are now touching the table in all four corners. So it's not going to have that uh, dog leg where one side is being lifted up or anything. So this is exactly how we want it for our Model T. And I hope this little tip will help you out. Now it's time for a little show and tell. And we'll begin with Laurel and Hardy, a show and shine here. And this is their revamped Model T kit. And as you can see, I painted in the gold on the wheel hubs, which would have been highly polished brass. I added in some wood paint into the truck bed and a Lucky Shot Pie Company. I thought that would be kind of a funny thing as they were throwing pies in each other's face back in the day. So Lucky Shot Pie Company it is. And uh, there's uh, boxes in the back of the truck bed. You can see the windshield that I added in there, right there. And again, it is looking really very much like the real Model T now. And here we have our Lucky Shot Pie Company boxes. And I thought these would be pretty good. These are 12 inch pies. So they're nice and big for Laurel and Hardy to get them in people's faces and everything. So again, really neat stuff that you can do with a printer and some logos from the internet images and whatnot, rescaling them and getting them just right so that you can have a lot of fun. 
Now what I'm going to do is, this is just a paper cutout, but I will glue it onto something like a piece of cardboard or whatever, just so that it looks like there's some height to those pie boxes, instead of them just being flat in the back. Next up we have the Three Stooges version of the pickup truck, and I thought I would add this mechanic from the Henry Ford & Company set, just so you get an idea of where the running boards are in relationship to his legs and all that sort of cool thing. This one has the British Columbia license plates, and from here out the other cars will as well. Now just turning this you can see that I've painted the truck in a dark blue. And here we have the Onion Oil Company and the slogan on the side, In Onion There Is Strength. Now this of course is the Three Stooges version. I had a little issue with the back wheel here and I had to just notch a bit in the fender to make it work. And this again is that alignment problem with the Model T suspension. But here you can see the wood spokes. I did not get to paint the little gold caps on there but I guess that's okay, I can get that later rotating the car around you will see or maybe you can't see too well but down below I've got the other license plate and the tail lamp that's actually how it does mount it's way the heck in there as it would be uh, wood in the truck bed again but overall I mean this turned out really nice now this is brush painted with testers 1111 dark blue and my blue color was actually really liquidy. This is four coats of paint on here, and that's how much it took to actually get that nice, beautiful blue color. Here we have the fruit wagon, again with a British Columbia 1927 license plate. Now the reason why I'm doing 1927 plates is because I want to do a diorama that basically encompasses all the Model T's and just before the Model A era. So the Model A is of course coming out in 28-29, but here we have uh, 27. So that'll keep me all in the Model T time period. So here we have the Fruit Wagon. I know a lot of you have been waiting for this one. There I added in the red spoke wheels just to add to the red on the sides here and you can see all the nice fruits and vegetables up underneath again really cool now I do have a picture of that from before we've got bananas eight cents each ten cents a pound and uh, here we have the tutti frutti decal now this is sort of uh, 1960s in the back but it does look nice on here I do have a little correction to make in the paint I got a little bounce when I was doing the pinstriping around that little square Ford area. Again the tail light underneath. And then I added in the figure again from the Henry Ford set just for a little bit of scale so you could see how big the truck is. Now on this one the seat is actually glued down inside so you can't lift it up and see the cool gas tank. But overall again another wonderful little model from AMT but it does require quite a bit of work to get it all together. Here we have our sports car version of the Model T. Now this is a light purple, like a mauve kind of color. And we have the license plate 1-023, another 1927 Wonder Masterpiece here. And I've got those side lights up top. And this is the one with the nice record and everything inside. And I've got Henry Ford beside this one. Again, you can see the nice yellow on the wheels. And then out back, we also have those auxiliary tail lamps, plus the reflector in the license plate. Again, really nicely done. The white top is just bare plastic for now. I will have to paint that later. Now, I wanted to show the tall tees coming up next, but I just didn't have time to finish them. I'll have to save that for a different video or something like that, maybe a show and tell. But overall, this is my last Model T in the bulk painting video, so I hope you have enjoyed this. Now, the other tall tees, one is going to be black, because as Henry Ford said, in these years you could have any color as long as it was black. 
So this purple would actually be a repaint, and uh, that would be a customer repaint. So I thought it really fit well with the purple here as being a sports car kind of thing. Again, you can see the nice little fastback. The Roadster Runabout is what it's really called. So the tall tees basically are much the same. They just have the uh, steel roof. And here, I can actually take this off for you, just so you can see what it would look like with the top down. Now just imagine that white uh, folded top like the Laurel and Hardy Model T sticking out the back. And there's your little 1925 runabout sports car. Again, you can take the seat off and see the gas tank underneath. And uh, it looks really good. Let's just zoom in a bit. There we go. So yeah, hope you enjoy this video. And look forward to the tall tees. And yeah, unfortunately I can't get them done, but I think it's time I show this video because I've been waiting for a long time and just could not get the chance to do the tall tees since basically the end of May. And here we are almost into July. So I think that's a little too long to wait. So here it is, and I hope you have enjoyed the video. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and share. And if you're going to be doing bulk painting, I wish you the best of luck. It's a lot of fun, but it does require quite a bit of setup to get it all right. But, like I said, in the end, you'll get these wonderful results like we've had here with all these show and tells. And as always, happy model building, and we'll see you in the next video.